Okay, guys, we've got uh, one more formula that we're going to be learning about today, and we're talking about the area of a trapezoid. So we're in lesson 9-3, area of a trapezoid. So this might be a shape that you haven't dealt with too much. Uh, today's date is 4 2 19. And basically what happens <coughs> with a trapezoid is it kind of looks like a parallelogram where somebody went the wrong direction on one side, okay? So let me give you kind of a shape of what it looks like. So it's kind of like a mountain that the peak has been cut off of, or a triangle that the top part had been cut off of. Um, so it has some similar features to the other shapes. First off, like parallelogram, it has a set of opposite sides that are parallel, but not congruent, so that's different. And then uh, we do have a base, but what's weird is we have two of them. We have one at the top, and we're just going to call him base 1, and his abbreviation would be sub 1. And then at the bottom we have base 2, and his abbreviation would be B sub 2. And then what you're going to see inside, from the top to the bottom perpendicular, that would be called a height. Okay, and you can do it on either side. All right. So basically, what we have is a interesting thing. If I take two trapezoids and I put them together, but I put them in together in such a way that I alter so the short side is on the top on one of them, on the bottom for the next. We're going to label them with their lettering. So this is B sub 1, this is B sub 2, and this guy will be B sub 1 at the bottom and B sub 2 at the top. And then I'll draw on some height lines. So that's your height. That's your height. And both of these heights are the same because of the fact that they're the same trapezoid. So if I wanted to figure out the area of a parallelogram, that would be the base times the height. But in this particular shape, if you look at it, the base isn't just one, it's both of these. So this would play the role of the base in our parallelogram. So we have b sub 1 plus b sub 2. And then height is just going to be height, right? So that is going to be the area of our parallelogram. Okay. But remember, it took two of those parallelograms, or, or two of those trapezoids together to make the parallelogram. So a parallelogram was made up of two trapezoids. Okay. So if I want to figure out what one trapezoid is, I could divide both sides by 2. And I'm going to do a little symmetric here. And what I find out is that a trapezoid is equal to the half of a parallelogram. Para parallelogram. There we go. So many letters in that word, don't you think? Now, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is apply that to the formula for the area of a trapezoid. So the area of 
the parallelogram is base times height, but in my drawing, when I took two uh, trapezoids and fit them together, the base of our parallelogram was actually the sum of b sub 1 and b sub 2, and then we had a height. But then we realized that in order for the area of one par parallelogram, in fact, I'm going to add these guys back in, the area of the par par parallelogram would be the two of the areas of a trapezoid. So the area of a trapezoid is going to be half of the area of a parallelogram. So of this particular one. So we have this formula that we're going to use. The area of a trapezoid is half the area of a parallelogram. So if our parallelogram had an area of b sub 1 plus b sub 2 times h, we're going to take half of that. So we get 1 half b sub 1 plus b sub 2 over h. So the two bases are the two sides that are parallel to each other. No other sides are parallel in a trapezoid. So we say in words half the sum of the bases times the height. And that's what we're doing to figure out the area of a trapezoid. Okay, so let's uh, start using that formula. We've got a couple of problems here we're going to work on. Um, I'm probably going to go on two screens, but this should all fit on one page. So it's going to ask us to find the area of the trapezoid. Or, uh, we'll say each trapezoid. And we're going to do two examples like this, and then on my next screen, which again should still be the same page, we're going to find the missing piece, okay? Alrighty, here we go. So first one, I've got this trapezoid. So this trapezoid is kind of special because he's called a right trapezoid because of that the uh, side is perpendicular to that base. Now I'm going to put in a whole bunch of numbers here. We've got uh, 12 inches at the bottom, we've got 5 inches at the top, and we do have 7 inches at the side. Okay, So I start always with my formula. Area equals 1 half the sum of the bases times the height. So it's telling me to find area, so I know A is going to stay A. Now inside of the parentheses, the numbers that I get to add are the two sides that are parallel to each other, which would be the 5 and the 12 inch. Now the height is going to be the guy that's on the outside, so we're going to call him the 7. So I'm going to do him like this. So again, I'm just going to kind of color code these. All right, and then we just start doing what math we can. So I'm going to simplify inside the grouping symbol. That's what order of operation tells us to do. Ew, and this is like not a good situation. I can't take half of either of those numbers, so what I do is I find their product, and then I'll take half of that answer. So I get 49, I get 7 and 4 is 11, so I get half of 119. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 2, so I'm going to do my division kind of upside down, kind of this short division idea. 2 goes into 11 5 times, which is 10, with 1 left over. 2 goes into 19 9 times, which is 18, and there's 1 left over. So that leftover is the numerator, and then the denominator is what I was dividing by, which is 2. So I get 59 and a half. So I would say the area is 59 and a half, and then we had square inches. Okay? So yes, we could contend with fractions in these. All right, let's do another one. Not a right trapezoid. And let's see. Let's put, we'll put some numbers in this darker blue. 
Uh, let's do 2.5. Oh yeah, good friend decimal centimeters. The bottom 4.8 centimeters. Then we're going to have our height stretching from the top to the bottom, making a perpendicular intersection, and that's going to be 4 meters. So we start with the formula. A equals 1 half the sum of the bases. Oops, sorry, not plus, times the height, h. So I start plugging in what I know. A equals 1 half. Inside the parentheses, I'm going to add the bases. And the bases are 2.5 and 4.8. And then I'm going to multiply by the height, which is 4. Okay. So again, I'm going to follow order of operations, and I'm going to simplify what's inside the grouping symbol first. So I can do that off to the side. 2.5, 4.8, line up the decimal points. Bring down that decimal point, I get a 13. I get 6 and 1 is 7. So I have half of 7.3 times 4. Well, this time, I actually do have a number I can take half of. So I'm going to take half of the 4. So 2 goes into itself once and into 4 twice. So now what I'm left with is multiplying 7.3 times 2. So I'm going to do that off to the side here. So I get 6 and 14 and one digit after the decimal point. So I get 14.6. So you would say the area is 14.6, and we would be squared centimeters. All right, so on my next screen, we're going to deal with what if we have missing dimensions. Now, there's a lot more variables involved here, so that'll be interesting. So our directions are going to be find the missing dimension. Not dimensions, just one. Oops, sorry, that went up high. There we go. So example three, um, we're going to see a, another right trapezoid. And again, the only way I know is if I see that right angle symbol. And then uh, we're going to have, <coughs> excuse me, 12 feet and 15 feet for our bases. For our height, we're going to have H. And they're going to give us one more piece of information, which is going to be the area. And the area is equal to 108 square feet. So I start with my formula. A equals half the sum of the bases. Hello, try that again. Base sub 1 plus base sub 2 times the height. And I start plugging numbers in where they belong. So the A is the 100. Look at that. I forgot the 2, and I knew it was there. 108 takes the place of A. 1 half is 1 half. Inside the grouping symbols, I will have the bases 12 and 15. And then the only thing I don't have a number for would be the height. Okay. So, lots of different ways to solve this, and I'm just going to show you one way. Oops, sorry. Let's go to black. So I have 108 equals 1 half. Add those two, you get 27 times h. Since I'm going to multiply half times 27, oops. Actually, I'm going to do a um, symmetric property. So I'm going to get 27 times 1 half is 27 halves h equals 108. And from previous chapters, we talked about when I have a coefficient that's a fraction, uh, then I'm going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal. Okay. Now, 108 adds up to 9, 27 adds up to 9, so I know for sure 9 goes into both of those numbers. So I'm going to divide each of them by 9. So that gives me a 3 here, 
9 goes into 10 once with 1 left over, and 9 goes into 18 twice. Well, guess what? I got more. 3 goes into itself once and into 12 four times. So on the other side, this is canceled, leaving you just with the H, and that equals 4 times 2, or 8. So we would say the height is 8 feet. Remember, when we're talking about a dimension, we're going to get a label without an exponent on it. All right, last example. We've got... Oh, this time there's no diagram. They just list out information, information for us. We get the area is 24 square centimeters. Base sub 1 is 4 centimeters. Base sub 2 is 12 centimeters. And we've got a height of... We have no idea. So we start with a formula. Half times the sum of the bases times the height. We're going to grab pieces. So for area, we're going to substitute in 24. Equal stays the same, half stays the same. And inside the grouping symbol, we're going to grab the two bases. So we have a 4 and a 12. And we're left with a mystery number H. Okay, so let's do what math we can do. So 24 equals 1 half times the quantity 4 plus 12, which is 16. And then we have the H. Well, good news for us, we can take half of 16 and we get 8. So I'm going to use my symmetric property and rearrange this. And we're going to have 8h is equal to 24. And then we just go ahead and divide both sides by 8. I felt colorful on this one. And I get h, remember that equals 1, h equals, and 24 divided by 8 is 3. So in this one, the height is 3 centimeters. And that's it. That's as hard as it gets, my friends. All right, have a good night. We'll talk to you later.